Hey, Amari. Hey, what's up? We've, uh, we've talked to you before, really since you got here, just about the, the immediate rapport you and Dak seem to have. Um, in the last few games when he has thrown to you, that the completion percentage hadn't seemed to be as high as it normally is. Are, are defenses doing anything, or is this just a, a stretch over time? You're, you're going to have this, and it'll be – uh, you know, they'll go re return to the norm going forward, or how do you view it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we'd like to be better. We'd like to complete every pass, you know, thrown my way, you know, between me and Dak. But I really think it's just um, it, this is an instance where the numbers don't really tell the whole truth. You know, um, if you look at last game, a lot of those balls were tipped at the line of scrimmage. Um, also, you know, a lot of the times he'll be throwing a ball away. Um, but it'll be in my direction, and that, I think that counts as a target too. So it was it was situations like that. If you really go back and look at the tape, obviously there were some incompletions that were thrown directly to me, um, which we have to work on. But you know, I think I think our connection is still fine. You know, before the season, we talked, and certainly I remember in training camp we talked about you know your numbers, and you, you know you wanted to have double digit touchdowns, you want to have you know. Yeah. 100 receptions and all that stuff. How do you view your season? Because the numbers aren't there and they're lower than been since you've been with the Cowboys. Say, say it again. I'm sorry. The numbers what? They aren't there. You know, it's, it's compared to what you have done in past years. It's certainly not the goals you had coming yeah. to the season because you said you, you wanted to be known as the guy that had the best numbers. Yeah. Even though you knew they spread the ball around and you had all these other weapons. Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, you have um, personal goals like that. And uh, I just really feel, um, or I really know that, um, you know, given the, the opportunity that I can lead the league in all categories, that's just how I, how I feel about, you know, my skill set that I've been blessed with. So, you know, obviously that's a goal, goal of mine. Um, but it's just like basketball, you know, if you, if you want to make 100 threes, you got to shoot over 100 or you got to shoot, you know what I mean? Like, it's the same thing with me. Like, if I want to catch 100 balls, I got to I gotta have those targets. And that's not really, you know, in, in my control. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, I just I just play my part. Is it frustrating, though? I mean, because, you know, you're, the, the numbers are just, even from past couple of years, not even what they were. Uh, I know we, you've talked about the, the big team goals, but getting you involved and having those numbers has been a big part of the Cowboys' success on offense the last few years. And it's just not there. Uh huh. Just not over the last eight weeks, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think our offense is 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 fine. You know, obviously, I um, alluded to the fact that we could be a lot better. You know, in red zone and third down, and I still feel like. Um, you know, um, I can help the team in a huge way in those areas, and I think it'll come. You know, we we have some plays in this week um, that I'm a big part of, and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, I can take advantage of the opportunity that's been given to me. Amari, we didn't talk to you after the game, but I think in the interview you did, you talked about how one of the reasons for slow start you think was communication between quarterbacks, receivers, coaches, everything. Can you tell us a little more about what you meant on that or what communication needs to be improved during the games? Uh, yeah, I mean, communication is, you know, the most important in, you know, all type of relationships, whether it be personal relationships, football, whatever, whatever you're a part of. And um, I was just alluding to the fact that, um, you know, uh, we, we need to have more communication about, you know, things like the routes we like to run, um, getting on the same page, um, talking to Dak about um, how he likes to throw those routes. We need to, to hone in even more on it because we understand the, um, the opportunity we have right now. Um, we really feel like the sky's the limit for where we can be. And so why not, you know, why not take full advantage of it and, and, and leave no st stone unturned? Uh, and that's that's all I really meant ab uh, about that. Just wanting us to reach our fullest potential. And on a related note, Dak was talking about the disguises that Arizona's defense was showing, and how he feels like y'all have been seeing more disguises than those same teams have showed other opponents recently. Do you agree with that? And how can y'all as receivers help him in those scenarios navigate disguises in real time? Yeah, I mean they really they really did a good job on defense. Um, Disguising, uh, you know, pressures, all those things. Um, we had, we felt like we were ready for it with the hots and everything like that. But I think um, their DVs and their defense as a whole really understood, really understood what they were trying to do. So, for example, like when we had hot routes, um, 
when we knew they were blitzing, the corners, you know, would sit on the hot routes, you know. So they had a, a good understanding of what they wanted to do on defense. And, um, you know, we just have to go back to the drawing board and, and, and be more prepared next time. Cedric Wilson has taken advantage of his opportunities when they've come this season. Now with Michael out for the year, what has impressed you most about Cedric and just him as a, as a player and the way he prepares and ultimately his ability on the field? Yeah, I'm fully confident in Cedric's ability to to come in and play that role really really well. Um, you know, he, he's just a guy who does everything really well. He's real studious. He knows every position. Um, he's crisp in his route running. He has for sure hands, um, and he understands his job. So uh, he'll he'll do a good job for sure. John, Amari, uh, Mike McCarthy's talked a couple times over, over the last few days about just how. You run the football well. It, it's not just about helping the passing game. It helps the entire team. You've obviously been here when the Cowboys have run the football well. What's the difference when that happens from your perspective? Uh, I mean, is just things more wide open for you, or is it? It doesn't, or do you not really see the differences? No, nah, you you see the differences immediately. Like, uh, you know, I'm a huge fan of Zeke running the football. You know, um, you know, we often joke around and say, you know, when Zeke runs the football, he he hurts guys. You know, so um, we're playing defenses, safeties try to come up and tackle them, corners and stuff like that. Even linebackers, he's he's hurting those guys. Those guys are checking out of the game, um, and obviously they they're putting a second string guy in there. It makes it easier for us for our offense. Um, and, and and then also it's just when you when you run a football you establish yourself as a you know a tough physical team and defenses don't really want to play against that. And then do you still do you still believe that you guys have the potential to get that running game back to where it was? Yeah, I, I really think so. Um, you know, it's just about a combination of things. You know, Zeke uh, he's been playing through you know that that knee injury, uh, but he's still been balling. Um, but I, I believe when he's fully healthy, um, you know, he's the best running back in the NFL, and I believe he's getting more and more healthy each week. Um, you know, we got Tony back there who's really explosive in the run game. So uh, we're, we're fully capable of having a, a, a really great running game. I mean, we still have a great offense regardless. But, yeah, I mean, th those guys are both capable of getting the job done for sure. Uh, Amari, on that communication front, has there been a renewed focus for you guys on that this week? Do you feel like it's been better so far? Yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, we've talked about, you know, all the details of every route. Um, you know, just a back and forth, um, just trying to get on the same page. Because you got to think the vantage point from Dak is different than my vantage point. I'm just focused on the route. <laughs> I'm just focused on the route and the, um, the leverage that the defensive back is playing with. Um, you know, he's focused on those two things as well, but he also has a lot more on his plate that he's that he's focused on. He's focused on like for example, um if a team is blitzing, I'm really not as honed in on the blitz as he is, even though I might see it coming or I might not. Um he's worried about you know, so he's he's just worried about more things than I am. And so uh that's why that's why that communication is so important. And can you talk a little bit about Malik Turner and what he brings to the offense? Yeah, no, Malik is a very viable option, um, real explosive guy. You know, he has those fresh legs. Um, but no, he's he's kind of like set in a way, you know, he, he understands his job and his responsibility. He knows the playbook. He can line up at uh, any any wide receiver spot. Um, and the thing about Malik, he gets better and better every time he touches the field. So he's another threat for sure. Amari, Trayvon's talked to us about how it was obviously Nick Saban who eventually told him to move from receiver to defensive back. In your experience playing for Saban, is it the type of thing that if Saban tells you that, you do it? And was there anything like that that Saban told you that it's like, okay, you listen to this guy, he knows what he's doing? Yeah, I think, um, you know, a huge distinguishing quality about uh, Coach Saban is from other um, coaches in college football or recruiters. Um, he really, really has a great eye for talent. Like um, when I went up there for the Alabama camp, which is how I got offered from Alabama, I didn't have a I didn't have a highlight tape. Like I had this one minute thirty second highlight tape was which is not even good enough to to receive an offer from a school like that. Um, 
and I probably had like three or four offers. But when I went up there, I I just did one on ones, and he came down there. He saw me one. He saw me run one route, one route, and he offered me. So he uh, he really has an eye for talent for sure. So I'm sure when he told Trayvon to move to corner, it was along the lines of the, like the same thing. He he saw his ball skills or how good his hips were or whatever he might have saw and was like, you know, you'd make a, a, a great corner. So, yeah. What would you have told Trayvon in that moment or what would you tell a teammate who he was telling to switch positions? That's kind of that same idea of like he knows what he's doing. I mean, I, it behooves the player to to listen to him because whatever position you at at the time, he, He's low key telling you like, hey, <laughs> hey, we got other guys for this position. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it's in your best interest to listen to him. On the topic again of miscommunication, or and I don't know if this would want to qualify, so I wanted to ask. I believe it was your first target of the game. You guys were on third down, just outside the red zone. Um, you, you ran kind of a hitch, and Dak threw it a little bit more inward. Was that a miscommunication where he thought you were going to break in a little bit more, or was that just the way it went? The first drive of the game? I think it was later in the first quarter. You were in the slot just uh, uh, oh. to see. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I remember. Yeah, I remember my first start. It wasn't a hitch. It was a – It was a, yeah, you can call it like a – I guess you can call it a deep hitch for now. But, uh, no, it wasn't – it was not miscommunication at all. It was the pressure from the D-line. Um, so he had to keep, he had to change his arm angle when he threw the ball, um, and so that's all that was. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks.